I am fascinated by old Great Lakes freighters that are powered by steam. In this video, we're going to look into how their power plants work. First of all, let's start with the steam turbines. They are often called impulse reaction turbines. In this picture is the high pressure turbine, which the first bigger stages are the impulse stages, where steam shoots out of nozzles and the velocity of the steam creates the power. Here is the low pressure turbine, where the steam expands through the large blades. At the end is the reverse turbine. The end of the low pressure turbine and the reverse turbine are hidden inside the exhaust shroud, which sits right over the condenser. Inside the condenser, the steam passes around tubes filled with water, and the steam will condense back into water. An electric powered water pump will circulate water through the condenser to cool it. Now I'm going to explain how the boilers work. The Great Lakes freighter is often going to have Foster Wheeler D-type boilers. These boilers are often oil fired. In this drawing of a boiler, you can see the boiler tubes which connect the steam drum and the lower drum. In between the boiler tubes are the superheater tubes, which make the steam extra hot. After the hot smoke passes through the boiler, it then goes up through the economizer which preheats the water. To use up the last bit of heat, the hot gases pass through the air preheater, which preheats the air. Hot air helps the fires burn hotter. Draft to the boilers is provided by two fans that are powered by electricity. Airflow is controlled by dampers. Almost as important as the main engine are the generators. Pumps and fans, like the boiler blower fans and the circulating pumps and condensate pumps, run on electricity. Old ships like the William A. Irvin use direct current. But more modern ships like the Wilfred Sykes use alternating current. Here are the turbo alternators. The six coil windings spin at 1200 RPM inside the generator producing 60 Hz in the coil windings in the stator. The steam turbine spins at 4,800 RPM and drives a 4 to 1 ratio gearbox that spins the alternator. The Arthur M. Anderson has two 400 kW generators that produce 450 volts, three phases and 60 cycles. If the power goes out for some reason, the ships have an emergency generator. The Arthur M. Anderson has a 185 kilowatt emergency diesel generator. Now we're going to talk about the feed water system. As water pools up in the bottom of the condenser, an electric powered condensate pump pumps it out. If the condenser water level runs low, a float valve will recirculate the water from the pump. When the water in the condenser is higher, the float goes up and closes the valve so that the pressurized water from the condensate pump will push it up into the deaerator. In the deaerator, steam is mixed with water to heat the water and also remove oxygen. It's important to remove non-condensable gases from the water so it doesn't rust the boiler. When water is boiling hot, it can't hold dissolved gases. It's the job of the feed water pump to put water in the boilers. A small steam turbine powers a two-stage centrifugal pump. The pump can create very high pressure because it can run at up to 9,000 RPM. The water level in the boilers are controlled by an automatic regulator. There's a governor on the feed water pump that keeps the pressure constant. The speed and power of the pump is changed to keep the pressure of the feed water constant. The automatic valves on the boilers regulate the flow of feed water precisely and the pump will keep up with it automatically. 